Hello grade 11, welcome. It's physical science time and today you will learn about the formation of light elements in the early universe called the Big Bang Nucleosynthesis. At the end of this video, you should be able to explain how these light elements are formed. To understand this lesson better, let's have first discuss the Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory explains the primordial creation and expansion of space at the beginning of time. This is the most widely accepted theory that the vast universe grew out of something where all matter and energy were compressed to infinite density and heated to trillions of degrees. A fraction of a second after the explosion, the universe was filled with quarks that combined to form protons and neutrons. Moments later, protons and neutrons combined. Matter began to take form like elements hydrogen, helium, lithium, and beryllium was formed through the process called Big Bang Nucleosynthesis. Now what is Big Bang Nucleosynthesis? Nucleosynthesis refers to the process of creating new atomic nuclei from pre-existing nucleons, primarily protons and neutrons. The Big Bang Theory predicts that the early universe was a very hot place, too hot that even the particles of proton and neutron are destroyed during collision. Since Big Bang is an expansion of space, when the universe expands, it cools. One second after the explosion, the temperature slowly decreases to a point that is enough for the protons and neutrons to combine. And that is where the Big Bang nucleosynthesis started. As defined earlier, nucleosynthesis occurs when protons and neutrons combine. So when one proton combines with one neutron, Deuteron, an isotope of hydrogen, is formed. Now remember this, the identity of an atom comes from the number of protons in its nucleus. Hydrogen has one proton, helium has two protons, lithium has three, beryllium has four, and so on. This means that no elements or atoms have the same number of protons. So if you're going to look at the periodic table, the elements are arranged according to increasing number of protons and we call it atomic number. We'll study this further in the next chapters. When deuteron combines with one neutron, triton is formed. And this is still hydrogen since it has only one proton regardless of the number of neutrons in it. As you can see, hydrogen has three isotopes. We have proton. Since one proton can be regarded as the nucleus of a hydrogen atom, deuteron with one proton and one neutron, triton with one proton and two neutrons in the nucleus. They all have the same number of proton but differ in the number of neutron and that is how we define an isotope. Two particles of deuteron can combine to produce helium atom with two protons and two neutrons. Or when a triton is bombarded with a proton, helium is also formed. So there are many ways to form helium atom through the collision of hydrogen isotopes. A helium ion is bombarded with a triton. The nucleon now have three protons and four neutrons. What do you think is the element formed? Correct, lithium. How about when two helium ions combine? How many protons and neutrons are in the nucleus? Yes, there are four protons and four neutrons. What about the element? What element is formed? Correct, we have beryllium. Since lithium and beryllium are heavier, it requires a lot of energies to form. That is the reason why there are only a portion of these elements in the universe compared to hydrogen and helium. The universe is said to contain 75% hydrogen and 25% helium. 
Light from distant galaxies are from glowing elements which emit spectra of a particular frequencies, primarily hydrogen and helium. Now, since the universe continues to expand minutes after the explosion, the temperature continuously drops making the particles unable to combine due to the insufficient amount of energies. Particles bounces back during collision and no more elements are formed. So that is how light elements are formed in the early universe through the process called Big Bang Nucleosynthesis. In our next lesson, we will discuss the formation of heavier elements in stellar evolution or the stellar nucleosynthesis. And that ends our lesson. I hope you learned something today. Thank you for watching. What the last part? One, two, three, go. And that ends our lesson. I hope you learned something today. Thank you for watching. That ends our le uh, one, two, three, go. And that ends our one, two, three, go. And that ends our lesson. I hope you learned something today. Thank you for watching.